The next stitch I want to introduce you to is called Brick Stitch. Brick Stitch is a very versatile stitch because it allows you to combine beads that have very different characteristics together. So for example, for this bracelet, I've actually combined, some of them look familiar already, some of the small size seed beads, triangle beads, delica beads, size 11s, and uh, they basically all fit together, which is something you can't really do with peyote stitch because the problem there is that it'll just pull the whole pattern out of alignment. Here's another example. This is kind of the same technique. Again, it's around a central bead, but where these fans kind of sit one on top of the other, these fans open out. And so here again, you can see triangle beads, delica beads and seed beads combined with size 11s and freshwater pearls. This one is, is another example. This one actually has freshwater pearls at the center and then it builds up a concentric pattern of ever varying bead sizes around it that has then been stitched together to form a necklace. There. And just like we stacked beads with peyote stitch, you can also stack beads in brick stitch. So these are actually stacks of multiple beads. Here's four, three, two. They're kind of building up in a fan shape. So this one here gives you a pair of earrings. So let's try this first by starting a simple triangle to just learn the characteristics of the stitch. Here's my knot bead that I already started. Now I'm taking my first fan bead And then I'm going to have two beads sitting on top. I'm going to go back through my fan bead, my first fan bead. There we go. And so the different characteristic with brick stitch, and I'm actually going to try to make a triangle, a very even sided triangle, is that we don't always stitch through the beads. We actually fasten the next bead row to the connecting thread. So for this, of course, I have to stitch up. And now for the next row, I want to go blue. So I'm going to pick up two blues. And I'm going to fasten them to the thread rather than going through another bead. Put them side by side. And then I'm going to go back through this bead, but I'm going to make sure this thread remains underneath and anchored to the prior stitch. Go back out this bead. Pick up another bead and there I have my first row of three. So I said I wanted to expand regularly so for my next one I'm going to go up and I'm going to fix four black ones to the blue ones. So again I'm starting with two because I'm increasing my row. Again stitch them to the thread from the previous row back through the bead. Go up, add another one, do the same thing. And I'm going to go with my fourth bead here. So get it through, fasten it up, and you're ready to expand some more. So let's go back to yellow. So this time again, I'm threading two yellows. There we are. Fasten them to the prior thread. Up through the bead. Get another yellow. And another yellow. And a fifth one. Here we go. No thread to fasten to. Go back up. And let's do this one more time. And you can already see, so even if this bead was thicker or fatter, it wouldn't really make a difference because they're all sitting side by side. So even if they were bigger, it would just make the triangle flare out a little bit further. 
but it would not pull the pattern apart. So let's go with two reds. Again, fasten to the one before. Come out. And another one. And my last one. So of course these beads are too big for it, but you could already see, for example, you could make yourself a really attractive pair of earrings out of this. And um, so maybe put a little fringe or some feathers at the bottom and you'd have a really nice little dangle there. You can also go straight with this stitch so you don't have to continue expanding. And in order to do that, I would basically say, okay, you know what, I'm going to be blue, but I'm going to stick with my six beads. So I'm just going to do this. Instead of taking up two beads, I'm just going to take up one. Same here. Same here. One more, and one more, oops, need a blue one, there we go, and then for the black one I could say, you know what, I want to do the same thing, I'll only want to stick with six beads here, so You'll just build yourself a new row above it. And so that way you could actually make yourself a bracelet or a necklace. And you just work up a straight band, very much like you would do with peyote. But again, you have the advantage of being able to combine bigger beads and smaller beads, various shapes beads. There we go. And that's basically brick stitch. And again, you kind of work it like a brick layer would put one you know, layer of bricks on top of the other. And you can always see also like bricks, they are always kind of sitting offset from each other because you always anchor your bead to the threads that are right here marking the upper row. You can also do this symmetrical um, by basically leaving out this bead. And so you would want to have one row expanding, one row contracting. We can try that too. So basically here I would say, let's see, we're back at yellow. I'll make me a row of yellow. not through the black bead and one more and at this point I want to stop because I want this to be symmetrical so I want this one to contract and just have five but then for the next row let's say I want to continue with black here I need to expand again so that's possible too And then this way you don't have this edge that is moving back and forth. Instead, it's expanding and contracting at the same time on both sides. And I'll show you a little difference here in a minute.
So when you look at the um, red, the blue and the black, you can see that the red is up, blue is going down, black is going up. When you do this symmetrical one, you can see the blacks are always sticking out, the yellows are going in, the blacks are sticking out. So you could start building yourself symmetrical patterns up in here, which is a little bit more difficult here when you always have the same row going back and forth. So very versatile stitch. Again, if you wanted to close this up, you just continue doing what we did with the yellows here, decrease every single row until you're finally back up at one bead end. So it's a really nice way of building up your piece a row at a time, like I said, like a bricklayer, which is what gives the stitch its name.